La La Land. And I suppose I should have waited and called before I flew here. Sorry, it was a waste of your time, love. Oh, it wasn't a waste of my time, Mom. At least I got to see that you're okay, and that's worth the price of any trip. But now I'm worried about Michael. If he's having those panic attacks again, I thought he was doing really well these last few years. Margaret, isn't it? She's enough to rattle the nerves of a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> She's going through the change now. She never leaves him alone. On his case, day and night, and him with two jobs plus the added pressure of David's wedding. Oh, I heard. So what's the future Mrs. Matthews like? She's a lesbian. <laughs> She's Lebanese, Mom. <laughs> Whatever. She's foreign, and that makes her different. There's nothing wrong with being a little different. I'm sure even uh, our family comes across as being a bit different to some people. Our family? Don't be silly. We're Canadian. <laughs> well, as long as David is happy, that's what's important. White sugar, Michael. You know I don't take white sugar in my coffee. I couldn't find the brown. Mom. And it's in that thing, you know, that thingy. Oh, yeah, right, the thingy. She looks fine, Michael. She sound disappointed. Why would you say that? Why would you say, she looks fine, Michael, like I've done something wrong? Well, I'm not accusing you of doing anything wrong, Michael. I'm just suggesting that maybe you've overreacted to what the doctor said, because she's certainly not ready for any nursing You home. don't know what the doctor said. You have no idea what she's been like. Look, I called you because I thought you should know she had a turn. I didn't expect you were going to come gallivanting all the way across the country on the next plane here. Gallivanting? Shh. Well, I'll have you know I went to great pains to be here. I had to rearrange my job and, and my bridge club, which I was to host this Wednesday with Abigail Morton Wilder, to say nothing of the fact that poor Gerald is having surgery tomorrow. Surgery? Yes, he has corns all over his foot. <laughs> and why did I do all this? I martyred him. <laughs> you might. I did it for you. I thought you might need my help. I believe that you might be grateful that I dropped everything and came straight here. But what did I get in return? Well, don't ask me any more questions, please. I keep getting them wrong. <laughs> Find out that Mum is fine, and she's certainly not ready for some geriatric war. What are you talking about? I never said anything of the sort. I'm merely telling you exactly what the doctor told me. Well, honestly, Michael, I don't know why you are so quick to want to stick Mum in some old age home just because she's had a bad day. Bad day? Now, unfortunately, I can't help but think that your phone call was the result of one of your panic attacks. Excuse me. I found the brown sugar. It was in the thingy. I have to go, Mom. I, I'm going to get a room at the Holiday Inn, and I, I have to phone Gerald. Well, what about your coffee? Oh, you, you can't go to the Holiday Inn. You've got to stay here. Well, no offense, Mom, but there's no shower here. That old tub has seen better days. I suppose you could always stay with us. Uh, no, thanks. <laughs> I'm just going to go out and get my things out of the car. Mom, I know we've had this conversation before. You're absolutely certain that there wasn't a mix-up at the hospital when she was born? <laughs> we didn't end up with a child of Charles Manson? Karen was born here at the farm. But take no notice. She's had a long trip. You know how she gets when she's tired? Yeah. Well, if she's going to stay, then I've got to go. She's got a million things to do. I'll, uh, I'll check back on you later tonight, okay? All right. Margaret will be worried sick about you. Should have phoned all the local hospitals by now. I don't think Margaret's going to be worrying about me tonight. She's kind of mad at me. It's the change. <laughs> <sighs> it does funny things to you. Margaret's funny anyway. <laughs> Dad fell in love with you when he was stationed over there? Your father was no slouch either. 
Your aunt Lily and I followed him round that base in Plymouth like two sick puppy dogs for weeks before he gave in. <laughs> oh. What a great picture of the farm. Oh, who's that? Hey, Mom, who's that standing with Dad outside on the farm just after you arrived in Canada? I don't know, love. Well, it's Dad and a, and a hunk uh, standing right beside an old truck. Right there. Oh, that's Carl. Friend of your father's <coughs> used to do odd jobs around the place. Oh, Carl. <laughs> he was cute. <laughs> oh, oh, shit! What was I wearing? And my hair. <laughs> oh, what was his name? Hey, Mom, what was the name of that guy? Um, you know the one that used to shave his head before it was fashionable? Oh, I know. Um, your Brenna. <laughs> Dated in college. I don't think your brother was in your closet. <laughs> he was in the King and I. Oh, that's not. Oh, uh, very, very lovely. Very, very nice. Very, very, very nice <laughs> indeed. <laughs> he always used to say that. You remember? Uh, yes. So, what was his name? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, I used to call him the very, very lovely man. What was it your father used to call him? <laughs> Dickhead, because he shaved his head. <laughs> <laughs> a disappointment you to You were him. never a disappointment to him. And as for those boyfriends of yours, he was jealous, pure and simple. <laughs> no one was good enough for his little girl. Well, especially Gerald. He hated him. He didn't hate Gerald. He didn't like him very much, but he didn't hate him. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter whether he liked him or not. Oh, but Mom, it did. I spent most of my life doing things that I thought would make Dad proud of me. You know, my, my grades, my job, where I lived, even my husband. You know, I suppose in some strange way I was trying to win him over. I just wanted to hear him say once, Karen, I'm proud of you. But it never happened. He was proud of you. Did he tell you that? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure he did. <laughs> he was too proud to say it, or too pig-headed. Well, pig-headed's good. I can live with that. Your father loved you very much, even if he never said it out loud. Well, the tea should be steeped by now. Green tea slows aging while you sleep. Oh, well, in that case, put mine in a gallon jug, will you please? She was dead. She is, but it's got nothing to do with her diet. <laughs> she electrocuted herself with a curling iron oh. while sitting in the bathtub, poor thing. She drank green tea every night as long as I can remember. She had the most beautiful skin. Lying in that coffin, she looked years younger than her age. <laughs> She drank a lot of the other stuff too, <laughs> which is what led to her dropping the curling iron in the bath. <laughs> and she did swear by her green tea. <laughs> Karen? Just take me my pills, Mom. I'll be right out. Oh, all right. Your tea's ready. Don't be long. I don't like tea. Get me a scotch. George, you haven't had a drink in 20 years. That's right. Make it a Mickey. What's Karen doing here? She finally come to her senses and ditched the idiot? No, of course she hasn't. She didn't bring the drama queen with her, did she? George, Gerald has to have surgery. Lobotomy? <laughs> Gerald. Mm. <coughs> Gerald, with a health problem. Who'd have thunk it? Don't be mean. <laughs> he loves Karen, and that's the main thing. 
Besides, she's, he's really worried now about our Michael. Why? Well, he's having those panic attacks again. Panic attacks? He's never been involved in armed combat. Stick him in the trenches for six months. I'll teach him about panic attacks. Oh, we were just talking about you, Karen and I. She says you never told her you were proud of her. Talking ab about what? Well, proud of her. Her accomplishments, if you like. Why, has she had any? Well, of course she has. She's very successful. She's got a good job. Big house. She drives a nice car. What kind of car? <coughs> Bet it's not a Ford. Probably one of them foreign heaps. It's blue. I know that much. Well, that's not a Ford. We drove Fords for 50 years. Never let us down, did they? Did they? Oh, I don't know. <coughs> so are you proud of your daughter? Of course I am. Well, you tell her when she comes back. I'm not telling her. You, you tell her. Fetch me another blanket. It's nippy in here. It's that old stove. I think the stove pipe's blocked again, most probably a bird's nest. So I'm not having you going up on that old tin, tin roof again. You nearly fell through it the last time. Michael will have to help you when he comes back from work. Ma? Oh, Ma. oh, Karen, we were just talking about you. Oh, who's here? Is Michael back? No, just your dad and me. Um, is that comfortable, love? Well, I'm off to bed now. I'll take my tea with me. <laughs> See you both in the morning. Oh, and Karen, I told you, Dad, what we were talking about just now. He is proud of you. Aren't you, love? Good night. Don't forget to drink your tea. back in your face now. You were looking white as a sheep before. Oh, it's my heart. I'm worried about not my skin. And besides, I'm drinking green tea. Oh, never been so scared in my whole life. Oh, Michael, did you check on Mom? Yeah, yeah, she seems quite content upstairs in bed reading. Oh, green was, tea? Oh, no, never mind. So she's reading. She's, she's not talking to someone. <laughs> well, who would she be talking to? Oh, uh, no one. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh, you need Dad, don't you? Ha <laughs> ha! Well, you heard her talking to Dad, haven't you? <laughs> Who's having the panic attack now? <laughs> you don't know what it was like, Mike. Yes, she was standing there talking to him and, a, and about him as if he was sitting right there in that armchair. <laughs> as if he was a ghost or something. A ghost? <laughs> Do you think? How should I know? I'm the least psychic person I know. I, I can't see shit that is there, let alone things that aren't. <laughs> Do you think maybe we should like, try talking to him or something? I think what? Well, I don't know. Try something. <laughs> Hi, Pop. How are you? <laughs> don't ask him that. He's dead. How the hell is he supposed to feel? Don't say hell to the dead. Excuse me for not being politically correct with the ghost. It's not like I talk to the dead all the time, you know? Ask him if he, uh, if he wants anything. What if he does? How do we get it to him? <laughs> oh, I don't know, but you're going to have to get it for him, because if he does answer, I'm out of here. <laughs> so, Dad, are you, uh, you're just visiting, or are you just visiting? <laughs> Why are you two talking to the armchair? <laughs> Oh, well, thanks a lot. What's this doing here? Do you need another blanket, Karen? Oh, no. Thanks, Mom. Oh, what are you doing here, love? I told you I'd come back and check on you. I just want to be sure you're okay. Oh, we're fine, aren't we, dear? Oh, yeah, we're in great spirits. <laughs> Sorry. I'll fold that up for you, and you go back up to bed. Oh, you really want to talk to the furniture. 
try talking to the television. It can talk back to you. <laughs> Now she thinks we're the ones who are senile. <laughs> well, I I'm sorry I didn't believe you about Mom. Like, what are we going to do? I mean, she's obviously having problems. Well, the doctor said it could be a mild case of dementia brought on by Dad's death, or maybe even Alzheimer's. Oh, uh, I don't think it's Alzheimer's. We don't know that, Karen. Uh, it's the stress of this whole year. You know, uh, Mike, I don't want her going into uh, some old age home. Those places can be so depressing. You know, surely there must be some medication or something we can give her. Yeah, but don't you think that's just going to delay the inevitable? Well, give her a few more months and then things might settle down by then. Well, they might, but you know what? I, I bet we'll be sitting here a year from now having exactly the same conversation. Well, besides the fact that she's just a little confused as far as Dad's concerned, she looks quite capable. You know, she doesn't seem to be a threat to anyone. And, you know, she knows this place. She loves it here. And it would kill her to leave here. We can't have this conversation now. She's upstairs and it's late. Uh, she has a hair appointment tomorrow. We'll do it then. I'll bring Margaret around and we'll talk about what we're going to do. Margaret? Oh, come on, Karen. She is my wife and she's quite good at these sorts of things. And besides, whatever we decide to do, it's going to affect both our families, yours and mine. Well, is there any way Gerald can be here? No, I told you he's having surgery tomorrow. Oh, right, the bunions. The corns. Yeah. I'll give him a call and I'll tell him. And whatever we agree upon, I know he'll go along with. I'll talk to the doctor and fill him in on her latest episode. In the meantime, I've got to go. I'll uh, see you in the morning. You should try and get some sleep. Oh, well, not much chance of that after this evening's episodes with the paranormal. <laughs> no. I'll see you tomorrow. <coughs> Sorry, Dad. interesting outfit. <coughs> Helen gone? Yes, I took her to the salon this morning. I'm going to pick her up. Well, I don't know where Mike is. He's supposed to be parking the car. He's probably talking to someone. He's always doing that, meeting people and talking to them. Complete strangers. Well, he always did that when he was a kid. I know that. I know my husband, Karen. We have been married for 23 years, you know. I hear you're buying a cottage. Waterfront home. For the sun or solarium? No shit. <laughs> Wouldn't you be more comfortable sitting over here? No, thank you. I'm quite comfortable here. And please refrain from using profanity around me. I don't like it. So, Mike was telling me you thought you saw a ghost last night. Oh, well, I don't know what it was. All I know is it uh, was sitting in that chair that you're in. Shit! <laughs> oh, Margaret, please, language. <laughs> I'm sorry it took so long I couldn't get the barn door closed. This whole place is really starting to deteriorate. Uh, make yourself at home, sweetheart. Stay a while, sit down. Anyone like some coffee? Oh, yes, I'll make it. Karen said she'll make... Things have been tense between us for the last couple of years, Margaret. But can we please put our feelings aside for today? Because we have things to discuss and decisions to make. Yes, yes, we can. Helen's well-being <coughs> has always been my chief concern. Even when she has cut me down and sliced me in two with her tongue, I've managed to see all beyond what was said and understand that she's a confused old lady. Well, that's very good of you, Margaret. You know, Michael needs our support. He needs to know that we're united in this. 
Well, I can be as united as the next person. Besides, after losing my own dear mother five years ago, Helen has been the only mother I've known. Oh, I forgot. So no sign of your mother then since Spain? <laughs> no. We last heard she was seen with a bullfighter, but that can't be confirmed. <laughs> bullfighter? No shit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you say something? No. I was about to, but I bit my tongue. Well, there aren't many things I'm really good at, but making coffee is definitely one of my specialties. <laughs> <laughs> That's debatable. Oh, we're off to a good start, Margaret, because I agree with you 100% on that one. Uh, don't be so rotten, you two. Uh, look, I spoke to the doctor and I filled him in on what's going on with Mom. I told him that she's starting to see people who aren't there, she's having conversations with people. <laughs> All I'm saying is let me be the one to tell her, okay? Because you know what she's like. Yes, I do. She talks to dead people. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to say another word. You and Karen can handle this one. She looks well, Karen. Yeah, she does, eh? Her sense of fashion hasn't improved much, though, has it? <laughs> she swears like a trooper. Here we are, back again. Oh, hi, Mom. Oh, your hair looks great. Oh, it doesn't. It looks terrible. She's messed it up. That new girl doesn't know anything about hair. Why they took her on in the first place, I'll have to rewash it and do it again. Mom, it looks nice. You always used to wear it like this. Old fashioned, like me. I'll do it again later. Uh, come sit down, Mom. There's something we'd like to talk to you about. Oh, sounds very formal. What have I done wrong now? Oh, we haven't done anything wrong, Mom. It's not that. It, it, we've just been talking, and we've decided that this old farmhouse really isn't a good place for you to live anymore alone. Uh, so we found you another place to live. Another place? It, it's called Willow's Bend. It, it's a retirement home, but it's not one of those depressing places. It's right next to a park, and the really cool thing is you don't have to worry about anything. That's right. They have people there, Mom, who make sure you take your medications every day, and do your laundry, and have a hairdresser. <laughs> and everyone is in similar situations as you, Mom. Um, you're going to make loads of friends. And even have activities there, Mom. Uh, they've got uh, day trips, sing-alongs on Wednesdays. Well, that sounds like fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Crafts, they've got bingo. You know what? It sounds just like... Prison. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> I was going to say more like, like camp. I'm too old for camp. Oh, come on, well, you know what I mean. It'll be wonderful. Why don't you go and live there then? <laughs> Mom, Mom, give yourself a minute to consider this. I don't need a minute. I don't need a second. I'm not leaving my home where I've lived for more than 50 years. But Helen, you'd be able to talk to people. I talk to people now. <laughs> I mean living people. Margaret, that sucks. Mom, Mom, now we've talked over many different options for you. You moving in with Gerald and I, but you don't like Edmonton, and besides all your friends are here. And moving in with Michael's out of the question, he doesn't have the room, and, and he's moving. And we've spoken to the doctor, and he absolutely recommends this Willow's bed. Let me get this straight. You've all got together 